know that most of what you've seen, read, or heard about Billy the Kid is untrue? My name is Gail Cooper. I'm a medical doctor and forensic psychiatrist. My specialty is murder case consultation for the defense. For 20 years, I've used my expertise to uncover the real Billy the Kid. Researching over 40,000 pages of archival documents and books, I've written the revisionist history. It's shocking, it's liberating, and I've written books demolishing the hoaxes, hijacking the history. My talks will share with you what I've found. Cover-ups, misinformation, and fakery, to use Old West lingo, will bite the dust. Hoaxing Billy the Kid history began in Billy Bonnie's lifetime, so he denied the lies. It continues to the present, so I deny the lies. The talks to follow expose the hoaxes and hoaxers of Billy the Kid history. The hoaxing began in Billy's lifetime with outlaw myths by the corrupt Santa Fe Ring and by his pardon's betrayer, Governor Lou Wallace. They made up the moniker Billy the Kid for their fictional villain. Those myths are discussed in Playlist Talks 20, 34, and 35. Billy responded to Governor Wallace by a December 12, 1880 letter. He wrote, I noticed in the Las Vegas Gazette a piece which stated that Billy the Kid, the name by which I'm known in the country, was the captain of a band of outlaws who hold forth at the Portales. There is no such organization in existence. So the gentleman must have drawn very heavily on his imagination. Those Las Vegas Gazette lies were by its ring-eyed owner, J.H. Coogler, in his December 3rd article titled, Powerful Gang of Outlaws Harassing the Stockmen. Excerpted, it stated, the gang includes 40 to 50 men, desperados by profession. It is under the leadership of Billy the Kid, a desperate cuss. They spend considerable time in enjoying themselves at the Portales. We believe the citizens of San Miguel County to be order-loving people and call upon them to unite in forever wiping out this band. Then Pat Garrett, after killing Billy, capitalized on the outlaw myth with his ghostwriter Ashman Ash Upson to publish his 1882 book, The Authentic Life of Billy the Kid, the noted desperado of the Southwest, whose deeds of daring and blood made his name a terror in New Mexico, Arizona, and Northern Mexico. The side effect of the lurid and profuse publications was Billy's massive fame. Possibly his youth, daring, repeated against odds escapes, and dramatic death scene were exciting. Possibly, Enough hints of the Lincoln County War freedom fight seeped out to make him an intriguing Robin Hood figure. By the first half of the 20th century, people cashed in. His fellow regulator, George Coe, published 1934's Frontier Fighter, the autobiography of George Coe, who fought and rode with Billy the Kid. Henry Hoyt, who'd gotten a bill of sale for a horse written by Billy, got himself a 1929 book deal for the autobiographical A Frontier Doctor. In 1930, renowned director, producer King Vidor made Billy's first film, titled simply Billy the Kid, because that was enough. It didn't take long for life's losers to realize Thar's gold in them thar hills. So relying on showman P.T. Barnum's attributed, there's a sucker born every minute, hucksters, hoaxers, and Billy the Kid imposters crawled out from their lackluster realities to fake connections to Billy and grab a ride on his coattails. 
Of these wannabes, the only ones deserving compassion are some imposters. Addled by mental illness or personality disorders causing identity delusions, they were more exploited than promoted by their marketers. One even ended up illegally exhumed and dismembered for fake DNA matching 68 years after his burial. Most Billy the Kid hoaxes are innocent malarkey, like a great granddad impressing his kin with a gun given to him by Billy the Kid, though its serial number revealed a manufacture date after Billy's death, or a family saying that Billy the Kid came to their saloon in Albuquerque, where he never was, or an old-timer newspaper interviewee relating that Peter Maxwell, when a cook for a cattle outfit in the San Andres Mountains, told him Pat never shot Billy, except Maxwell, owner of Fort Sumner, was not a cook or there and identified Billy as the victim. The hoaxes that I'll expose in the talks to follow are far from innocent. They were willfully manufactured labor-intensive, elaborate, self-aggrandizing, profiteering scams to hijack the history. The dictionary definition of a hoax is an act intended to trick or dupe, or something established by fraud or fabrication. So hoaxes fool people intentionally. A measure of these historical hoaxes' intricacy is that my books debunking them go up to a thousand pages with thousands of sources in their bibliographies. And one of the 21st century hoaxes took me seven years of litigation to get its public official hoaxers hidden documents proving their records forgeries and fake claims. These huge frauds have buried real Billy the Kid history under a mountain of their trash. As evidence of the damage, as a Billy the Kid writer, I most frequently asked, did Pat Garrett really kill Billy the Kid? The answer is yes. Up until the latter part of the 20th century, hoaxers relied on almost total public ignorance of the history to make up claims. Scholarly research was just beginning by mid-century. The main history books were later, like Frederick Nolan's 1992 The Lincoln County War, A Documentary History, or Jerry Weddle's 1993 Antrim Is My Stepfather's Name on Billy Bonney's Early Adolescence and they were unlikely reading for lay people. So Mark Twain's quote applied. The most outrageous lies that can be invented will find believers if only a man tells them with all his might. Billy the Kid hoaxes shared a formula. First of all, old-timer imposters spewed information that no lay person could fact check. Their con artist promoters claimed it as special knowledge, proving that they knew Billy or were Billy. How else could they know it? The answer is that they were parroting from sources, but predating scholarly books, those semi-fictional sources had telltale errors giving away their game. There is no special knowledge in any hoax. Secondly, hoaxers lied. Old imposters filled in information missing in sources with fabricated fatal errors. Or later hoaxers forged tape-recorded transcripts of an old impersonator to correct his mistakes to match modern discoveries. Or some hoaxers impersonated historians by claiming research using obscure documents which they then misstated to pretend discoveries contradicting known history. Thirdly, hoaxers fake consultants or technology. 
so-called experts were enlisted to perform handwriting analysis or photo comparisons supporting the hoaxing. A 21st century hoax claimed DNA matching by using an unscrupulous forensic specialist and his lab while hiding that there was no valid Billy the Kid DNA on the planet and lying that they got it. Fourthly, hoaxers used mass media for promotion. The 1990 movie Young Guns 2 backing imposter hoaxes by having the Billy character survive Pat's shooting under guise of Hollywood storytelling did more damage to real history than all the hoaxes combined. Another hoax, instigated by a self-promoting New Mexico governor, made a 2003 front page of the New York Times. Billy is also fodder for fake TV documentaries, usually with a telltale lead-in, hissing, histories, mysteries. One 21st century hoaxer made such a documentary, backing imposters and featuring his many fellow hoaxers, making it a collectible for a hoax connoisseur. And there exists a veritable library of hoax-expounding books printed by questionable publishers. Fifth, there was purposeful outreach to conspiracy theorists. Illustrative sound bites are, why are they, meaning historians, so afraid of the truth? Or, history is not as written. But why is the real history so vulnerable to these shenanigans. I can't avoid blaming the vacuum of meaning left by past historians. Relying on the outlaw myth, they made Billy a boring and generic bad guy, indistinguishable from old-fashioned cowboy characters in the media. Ironically, the hoaxer shared that deficiency by also lifting the antique outlaw myth and the old-timer imposters called themselves Billy the Kid, real Billy Bonnie's hated symbol of his unjust outlawing. My hope is that Billy Bonnie's real history, as discussed in Playlist Talks 1 to 41, can counterbalance misguided presentations and relegate hoaxers to an amusing footnote. In the upcoming talks, I'll present my books, analyzing the main Billy the Kid hoaxes to expose their fakers and their fakery. <laughs>